Thank you for having me, Josh. All right, so first off, the question I want to talk about is what can you tell me overall about the operation that did take out Sinwar? So this was actually the culmination of a very carefully conducted strategy. You have terrorists that were holed up in tunnels underneath the ground while their civilian population was above ground. It's very difficult to reach them. These tunnels are booby-trapped. There are often ambushes on the way. We knew that Sinwar was in the area of southern Gaza, and we tried to flush him out by restricting his area of movement. So we began closing in on this area of Rafah, which is not far from the Egyptian border, taking out tunnels, closing roads, taking out buildings, and restricting his movement. And as planned, about two days ago, he acted like a fugitive. He left these underground tunnels, went into an abandoned building with two other terrorists, hoping we wouldn't find him. IDF troops didn't know it was Sinwar, but we identified three terrorists with weapons in the building. A tank fired at the building, scattering them. Two of them went into a different structure, were eliminated. One terrorist went into an abandoned structure to the second floor. We sent in a drone into that structure. As the drone approached, we see a jihadi terrorist sitting in a chair. The drone closes in. He tries downing the drone, throwing objects to the drone. We could see he was possibly injured, but definitely armed at which point an IDF artillery shell struck the building. And when our troops went to scan the area, they saw a figure lying in the rubble that looked like the arch terrorist, the architect of the October 7th massacre, the Osama bin Laden of Israel, Yahya Senwar. And in fact, it was verified that that evil person saw his last day just yesterday. And I have to ask, now that Senwar has been taken out, eliminated, is that the end of the operation in Gaza? Does it continue as it has been? You know, we're, we're looking at, Josh, is 101 hostages that are still in those tunnels beneath Gaza. A number of them are American citizens. Those people, as we're speaking, are living in the harshest conditions with barely any air deep beneath the ground. As long as our hostages are in those tunnels, this cannot end. We have got to bring our people home. We are also still experiencing shelling by Gazan cities. It's a lot less, but there are terror groups that are operating in that area. But even more, I'll tell you, Josh, we have got to be able to defeat the ideology of Hamas. In order to have the next day in Gaza, the ideology of Hamas has to end. And that means while they're teetering, while their leadership isn't there, we have got to deal them the final blow so that organization cannot resuscitate and we can begin the process of bringing our people home and rebuilding Gaza with new leadership, one that looks forward, not towards the terrorism of the past. And I do want to take you out to this live image that we have over Lebanon right now and ask you, where does the situation stand there? Is the IDF still fighting Hezbollah there at this hour? And is that showing any signs of letting up? Because it seems the attacks by Hezbollah on Israel are constant. We are. We're waking up every morning uh, to people who live in the north. It's all day long. We wake up every morning to news reports of 50 shells or 100 shells being fired at northern communities. We are absolutely focused on the north. We just called in just a few minutes ago another brigade of reserve soldiers to send them to the north. We are moving Hezbollah back from the border of Israel. We're taking out their weapons supplies. As you know, they've been hiding their missiles and their emergency, their, their their equipment that was going to be used to attack Israel in homes, civilian homes directly on the border. Our troops are carefully moving through that area, encountering, in many cases, friction with terrorists implanted in these areas, carefully planned, and therefore we have to proceed with precision and determination, but we are engaging them, and in every engagement, at the end of the day, the IDF is winning. It's going to take time because you have an enemy that Iran funded, and trained and was waiting for this day. But we have no choice, that's our advantage, but to defend our homes, and we will do so with whatever it takes. I did want to go in reverse a little bit and talk a little more about Sinwar, because when all of this did unfold, we got that statement from the IDF and Shin Bet that said they were looking into the possibility that this was Sinwar. Were IDF troops and other folks uh, fairly certain this was him, but just wanted to make that official confirmation before they said 100 percent, this is Yahya Sinwar? Absolutely. That was a situation, and I'll tell you how. First of all, the likeness of his image resembled 
most recent pictures of Sinwar. Let's keep in mind, Josh, we haven't seen the man in over a year. While the people of Gaza have been experiencing hell on earth, Sinwar has been hiding under tunnels. He is a coward. In fact, he was found with thousands and thousands of shekels of money on him, which would have been salaries for multiple Gazans over years, along with IDs. He was on the run. So they looked and they saw a resemblance. However, there was one more thing that gave it away. One of the two terrorists that fled into the building adjacent was the brigade commander of Khan Yunus, a person who was known to have accompanied Sinwar since he began his underground efforts. And so when you put two and two together, it seemed like it was the goal. However, as you can imagine, when it comes to someone on the bin Laden level, we have to be 100% sure. What I can tell you what is also certain is the world is a slightly better place. We are fighting a war, and I heard R.A. Lightstone say this before, that is a war that America is fighting as well. We have shared values. It is a war against Islamic fundamentalism. It is a war against terror. Iran is funding it. Hamas and Hezbollah are the tip of the sword. We just happen to be the closest to them on the border. Therefore, our efforts taking out someone like Sinwar is a blessing, and it shows evil throughout the world. You cannot stay forever. You will one day be defeated, and good, and good nations like the United States and, and Israel will eventually, eventually take care of you, and you'll pay the price for what you've done. Over the last year, we've talked a lot about the fact that Sinwar was likely surrounded by hostages, essentially using them as human shields. Now, of course, we know yesterday when he was found that he did not have those hostages around him. Is that concerning for the IDF? As you mentioned, of course, the operation does continue to find all 101 of those hostages that do remain in captivity. It is, of course, it's a great concern. The hostages, uh, bringing them home is on every single Israeli's mind. Everywhere we turn, we have their pictures. The children wear T-shirts to school with the hostages' names. And we're such a small country that this isn't something that happened thousands of miles away. We know these hostages and we know their families. And yes, finding Sinwar without them, what we can draw a conclusion is that Sinwar was trying to hide and felt that he had to break away from the hostages so he could be mobile and have no footprint and hide while we engage with his other terrorist operators. We are continuing right now, especially right now, to leverage the situation where Hamas's leadership is destabilized to bring our people home and deal with Hamas and give them the final blow so that they and Iran cannot further terrorize the people of Israel. Is there any other message that you want to do get across here to people who are watching? You know, Israel is fighting on seven fronts right now, Josh. We're fighting both with Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Houthis. This is a war for our very existence. Just three weeks ago, 181 ballistic missiles were fired at Israel from Iran. If this was America, and I know it's extremely difficult to even imagine, if one ballistic missile had been fired at America, or if one campaign had gone over the border and attacked people, raped women, and killed men, women, and children. Would you make a decision to have a ceasefire against them and not finish the deal? Of course not. Had we done that in Europe during World War II, there would still be Nazis in charge of Europe. We need to put ourselves in Israel's shoes. This is on our border. This has attacked our families. And we need to see this through to the end. And everyone on all sides of the border, on all sides of the world, have got to understand this and support Israel at this hour. All right. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. As I mentioned, you've been going nonstop, so I definitely appreciate it. Is there anything else that you want to add before I let you go? I want to thank you. I want to thank you for giving us the time to speak and for not just taking the propaganda that is being fed throughout the, uh, throughout the Hamas world and the world of Iran and letting the truth stay and letting the truth say loudly that we are here and we are going to be victorious. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and hit subscribe to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, stay informed and inspired. This is Dejobnik signing off.